Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, James Croton. Every week I will be sharing the experiences that have defined my journey and talking with people who have their own powerful story to tell. It's about doing better and being better in life, business, and all things in between. The Visually Inclined can catch us on YouTube, or you can check us out on just about every podcast platform. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. You are uh, back at the friendly confines of Chico Bocello. Uh, it's Merry Christmas here at Chico, and uh, it's it's probably one of our most favorite places in the in, in the area. So happy to be back here, and happy to have our guest today with us, Tracy Montardi, uh, Villa Montardi Photography. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful meeting you. Yeah, you as well. You said, not, you know, it's funny because I uh, have so many connections on social media. And you being one of them, and I interviewed somebody yesterday who I had been connected with for years and never met before, mm -hmm. and found out so many interesting things about her that I just could not like. It, it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, but no, I'm really happy we had a chance to meet. I love your work. I've been wanting to uh, to talk to you about that for some time, and uh, I'd like to just really just really jump in and talk about that first, and then we can we can go sure. wherever you want to go. But. Your 50 over 50 project, which is portraits, and thank you for, so much for the book. Um, as I had mentioned to you, I, a lot of, probably over half of them are friends of mine. And uh, you, you I, have- I tend to say that great people tend to know other great people. So I, I think that, that I think it works out. It does work out. <laughs> you. But you, you have a remarkable eye for, for, for capturing essence. Thank you. Do you know what I mean? It, um, I've talked that. to other photographers, and there are a few that do. You can tell the ones that do because you you pull something out that is visible. You're not just snapping a photo, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that that comes from, you know, when I looked at your website, I a bunch of words jumped out at me, but the first one that jumped out was legacy. Mm -hmm. What does that tell me about that? What does that mean to you? So. I, I mean, legacy is based the underpinning of almost everything that I do, right? Okay. So um, I have a museum background, and my undergrad was in anthropology. And so it's just perfect people's... training for photography. Right, exactly. So like people, people's stories, yes. history. Like cool. my, my, the way I, I, I see, I, ha I have a little blog post about it, but I, I have an analogy of like, um, that legacies are like tapestries, okay. right? So... And, and creating them with intention, right? So weaving them with intention creates something beautiful that can last sure. for centuries. If it's just sort of haphazard and, you know, whatever happens, whatever happens, then it, it ends up just being a jumbled mess sure. and it doesn't actually get preserved and it ends up in the trash, right? So, um, so for me, that intentionality and the curation is huge. So with my museum background, one of the things that I discovered is that you can have a warehouse full of artifacts, right? Mm -hmm. But if they're not preserved, if they're not managed properly, if they're not, then th then you can't curate them into something that is then usable, right? Right, and it just ends up being like a hoarding situation. Yeah, sure, <laughs> right? sure. And so when you look at those, so what I see now, what's happening is we're taking more photos than ever Okay. Everyone's got thousands of you know photos on their phones right now, right? Um, and even if they're managing them properly, which they probably aren't, because you know this is like a new problem over these last you know, decades. But it's like out of sight, out of mind, right? So we have all these photos, and they're so important to us that people used to run into burning buildings. If you remember back before digital, yeah, people sure. would run into a burning building to save their photos. So they're so valuable, but. Because there's so many of them, if you don't curate and actually pull them into something that's usable, sure. they could all get lost. Well, absolutely. And, and because your kids will never go through them. This whole room would be filled to the ceiling with photos if you printed them. Yeah. Your kids will never go through them. So, so, you know, for something so important, I feel like, and we're so busy now too, I just feel like for something that's so important, let's pull out what's like for now, what's mm -hmm. really important, but then also curate that with intention for the future right. and for and, future generations. And I think you say, you, you, I've seen you say it, you quoted it, is it, you, you know, looking past the picture. Yes. You know, so, yes. and I said to you a few minutes ago, 
uh, before we went, we, we went on air is that you, most photographers live in that moment to get that shot and they're not yeah. thinking beyond. Mm -hmm. And how do you train yourself? How did you train yourself to do that? Because that takes, that takes some discipline. You know, I mean, every photographer wants to get that pretty picture, that perfect picture, right? Right. But so to look beyond that moment, that that pretty picture in the moment, to mm -hmm. what that will be, right? Ten years, twenty years, hundred years from now, how do you, how did you discipline yourself to to do that? Because that's a that's a skill. Well, it's just so funny that you say that because it's just sort of what I naturally just do. But I think that probably, and what I've discovered actually, this last year has been really incredible. I've learned a lot about myself, even though I've been in business since 2006. So, but yeah. I've learned a lot in the last year. Well, really three years since I started this project, but really the last year. Um, but I think the aesthetics are, are important to me, yes. But because I connect with my clients, I'm trying to, they're not just models for what I'm trying to do. I'm sure. trying to know them and, I, and, and bring them forth and I'm creating an experience. And so that's another thing is um, another kind of touch point in, in the way I view all of this is that the experience is really more important than the aesthetics. So like, it's like a portal. So I say images are marinated in the experience that created them. Okay. And everybody can, when I, you know, good or bad. Yeah, so sure. everybody has that photo of the, you know, their kid was, you know, unhappy with getting their photo taken that yeah, day yeah. and they're threatening them. You're not going to get ice cream. You're not going to, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Everybody's yeah. done that. I've done that <laughs> to my own deal. Yeah. You know, um, but the, what I've discovered is that we laugh about it, but what the kid remembers, if they're old enough to remember, is that they were bad that day. So when they see that photo, it's negative. It's a it's a bad right? it's a bad memory. Right. So what I started doing was really trying to craft the experience to be positive. Okay. The experience itself, because that's where the power of the photo is, is that it I mean, at least for the subjects, it pulls that forward. So, you know, I would instead maybe have a parent whisper in their kid's ear like you know something they love about them or something they're proud of them for and now oh my gosh now when that child sees that photo in their home not on a phone or on a hard drive in their home <laughs> right 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 um they you know they've been having a bad day they got bullied at school or maybe they got a bad grade on a i don't know whatever it is but they feel Good. They can look at that photo and then bring them back to a good place. Exactly. And they feel grounded. They feel loved. They feel right. So, so it's the same with when I do, you know, with even the 50 over 50 or, or just anybody really is I'm trying to figure out what is important to them and let's make sure we're centered on that. So they're, so what's, what you're seeing is what I'm thinking is what you're seeing is that they're in that space in their head. And plus, we just also just try to have a lot of fun, too. So sure, that helps. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and usually almost every single person who comes in is nervous or they say, I don't like myself in photos or I, I almost I every does. single person <laughs> yeah, says that. I don't think anybody does. Right. But but by the time they leave, they're relaxed and it's yeah. like old hat, like they've done it forever sure. and they're having a good time. And 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 I think I just provide space for them to just allow their real selves to come forward because everybody has a mask, you know, and then that just sort of falls away, I think, because by the time we've done the consultation, we've had a lot of deep conversations. Then, you know, we go through the session and by the end they're, they're present. Right. So I think that's right. maybe the key. And I, think, I don't know. I think but. they have to be opening themselves to you through yes. that process because as I said yeah. you, you're pulling that essence out of them right so you know when I look at some of my friends in these in these photos I mean they're phenomenal but you really capture them you know what I mean and I and I mentioned Linda Long in, yeah. in particular you know that's Linda yeah. that's the Linda that I know totally. you, you know so if somebody that didn't know her looked at that photo right and then met her they would be wow right. I, that's what I expect Right. You know, so she's just, you just have that knack. And I think, you know, pulling that out and getting to know your, your clients and spending that time and going that little bit of that extra mile, so to speak, really makes a difference. Oh, yeah. I, and, and like I said, I, I do think as we're talking, well, I mean, I've thought about it before, but even just as we're talking, I think 
that that allowing that space mm -hmm. for them because it is a vulnerable thing sure. they have to feel comfortable sure. because so many especially I don't like anything about getting my photo taken right nobody, don't like anything nobody about does it. you know <laughs> yeah it, it's it's I mean, some people maybe but I don't know but, yeah, right it's actually and painful. and being able to it's just not a normal natural thing right really for us except you know we do selfies and everything yeah. but but in terms of going and getting a portrait taken you're if people are so focused on the external and what they look like right which yeah, we're going to do your hair and makeup. We're going to make sure you have beautiful clothing. We're going to set. We're going to make it beautiful. But that's not why we're doing this, yeah. right? Like that's right. that's what we're trying to do is create the opportunity to allow people to to come forward and and be seen, you know. Yeah. And and I think with social media that we have now, everybody's projecting this image that they want into the world, and even with and you know, calling, I'm probably calling myself out here in a little bit, but you know, even with like holiday cards, everybody's so focused on getting that perfect photo for the holiday card so they can show everybody how amazing their yeah. family is. And they do feel like their family is amazing. As, and as, as, right? it as, as it should, yes. But in the meantime, what can happen is to get that photo, they're creating the negative experience of rushing through it. 100%. Put yeah. making it a to-do item. Because they try to make it day. too perfect, right? Right. They're trying to make it too perfect. Or they're, they're just, like, what I want to tell people and what I think is important is to take that day. Don't schedule any other. Don't have it as a to-do item before the soccer game or okay. whatever. Like, everybody will say, if I ask you what's most important to you, you would probably say, your relationships, your family, your wife, Absolutely. right? Like, okay. Absolutely. But then let's showcase that mm -hmm. and actually take a day. That's worth having a day once a year at sure. least, sure. right? Yeah. To say, this is our sacred day. We're going we're gonna to have, sure, we're going to have a portrait as part of it. But the rest of the day, we're just going to be together. We're not going to have other demands on our time. We're going to go do things that we enjoy. And we're going to just invest in, e in each other and our relationships, you know? And I, yeah, I get it. So, because sometimes people are just like, oh, hey, photo shoot, it's, we gotta get this done because we gotta get the card. And the, you know, and yeah. it's like yeah. they almost shoot themselves in the foot. Are they at right. least not getting the value out of it that yeah. they could? Because that's where the power is, is in the experience of it, you know? I get it, yeah, yeah. That, makes, that makes perfect so, sense. So, I don't know. So even, I was just, we were just talking the other day, even when we were doing, um, I used to do these for many years at Gilfill and Farm. I did, um, uh, I did these holiday like Santa sessions, okay. right in the barn. But I, of course, I can't just have Santa sessions. I also had a horse-drawn carriage. Because <laughs> well, why? Right? Why not? Why not? Why if not? you're in a barn, <laughs> you might as well. We're on the farm. Yeah. And so we would have. You know, we had a horse-drawn carriage, so they would come down at the bottom, and then they would ride through the farm up to the barn, and they had this very private, like, experience with Santa, and okay. they got real sleigh bells. Like, it was a whole thing, you know? Nice. And um, I still have people. The kids are all grown now, of course, but um, I still have people that are say, that was Santa. That was Santa. They'd go to the mall, and they're like, that's not Santa. I've met Santa. You know? And because I... And, I know him. Right? I know him. I know him. I know him. I know him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's true, yeah. Right. Um, because uh, my main thing is I just wanted to create, I didn't want to just have, oh, here's your photo. I just wanted it to be something magical. I wanted to create a whole experience. And so I think that piece of it is super critical for me, you know? And, you know, I talk about doing, you know, destination sessions and, you know, whatever. And if we're talking about, oh, let's get a big gown and do all this stuff. Yeah, it looks pretty. It's beautiful. But it's the experience it's the of experience. it. The experience right. of being in the gown and having the wind blowing and all of that. That's what's coming forward. That's right. what's allowing the person to come forward. It's not It's not necessarily the aesthetics. And that's what they're going to feel five years later, ten years yes. later, when they look at that photo. Right. They're not going to remember that moment. They're going to remember all of that. Exactly. Around. They're going to... And that's one of the things I ask them, my clients, is how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel powerful? Do you want to feel feminine? Do you want to feel beautiful? Do you want to feel like, do you want to just feel relaxed and funny and just let 
you know, because, you know, a lot of times people come in, especially like, you know, women that I tend to work with tend to be, um, I wouldn't say like high achievers, but I don't mean like, I, I just mean people who are like driven, like by impact, but they're busy. Sure, they're doing guess. stuff in the world, right? Like they're, whatever it is that they're doing, they're, they're busy. And so they tend to sort of put themselves on the back burner. But it, right? it, it, isn't that a woman thing though? And I, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I mean, women drive everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the world would be really <laughs> not a really good place without mm -hmm. women. You know, and, and I love, one of the things I love about this Pro, this project you did was that it's very empowering. Mm -hmm. It's very empowering. You use words like legacy, empowerment, connection, mm -hmm. beauty, confidence, those types of words that that you very strategically, by the way, put in your mm -hmm. website and your, your materials, which I think it, your, your website, your all your materials are very, very well Thank done. You. So, but it, it brings, you know, I talked about you bringing the essence of your clients out, but those, your material bring out the essence of you. Okay, so I was able to look at that and, and start to really get understand and get to know a little bit about you before you even walked in the door. Right, you know, and, right. and that's important as well because, you know, this is the most stressful thing most women will do is yeah. is to really put themselves out there and let their, let their soul, their essence be revealed, right. you know. Right. Another thing that I talked about a lot with clients was... Um, Especially specifically with the 50 over 50 because I do love I mean don't get me wrong, I love families mm -hmm. I love the relationship you do a, a lot of senior portraits too I do see yeah seniors yeah. I usually try to um, encourage families to also grab a little family portrait as part of the senior session okay. Okay. because this is a big milestone for their family absolutely They're, right absolutely. especially I mean this I is, wish somebody would have suggested that to yeah. us you know when my kids because I don't have that Right, you know? and this is like the moment before they're true. launching into the world. This yeah. might be the very last family portrait of that nucleus, especially if it's the first child leaving. Yeah. Oh my gosh, right? Like this is absolutely right. Absolutely, so, that's that's big. Or, or a lot of times, also sometimes if their kids are in college or have already yeah. moved out, and nobody's married yet. Oh my gosh, let's get a family portrait because yes, it's going to be wonderful when they get married and they have you know kind of expand. But yeah, this is an opportunity to capture that nuclear family well I, I, you know. I think that's great because you know with marriage unfortunately in our society comes divorce right so then you get that right. you get that portrait then all of a sudden you got somebody in there you don't want in there <laughs> <laughs> right. what, what's that guy doing right. there? you know right, exactly. so I mean it, it, it's it's it really makes sense to get that done then that's a tremendous idea like you said yeah. I, you know I have five kids go through and we didn't yeah. do that you know right. and, and when I look at their senior pictures I, I that now I'm even thinking more yeah, so like, you, know, you know, like you want to celebrate the, the, the child, but it's also the family's accomplishment, you know. But what I was going to say about the, um, what I talk about with clients, and I'm just trying to think of where, because I kind of, we went off on a thing and I'm trying to remember now. Um, I do that a lot. By the way. I know, right? Me too. Totally. <laughs> Are you Sorry, ADD? But... I'm totally ADD. So, I mean, like, and I don't, I mean, actually, I figured that out once my son was diagnosed and I was like, <gasps> This makes so much sense. My life makes so much sense now. Yeah. But yeah. Um, something, oh, I know what it is. Okay, so one of the things I talk about with my clients, especially the 50 or 50 women, mm -hmm. is that most of the time we only get photos of ourselves when it's our in our relationship to something else. So okay. headshots, mm -hmm. that's our value in you know, commercial value, business, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Family photos were wife, mother, sister, child, you know, all of sure. those things. But doing something like this is an opportunity to essentially stand in value of yourself. Mm -hmm. That regardless of all my other roles, I am valuable to exist yeah. in photos. Right? right. right? Like, right. that is a... that. Leaping in on that is, um, or stepping in to that is, there's a whole self-development aspect to all of this as well. And um, I think that's something that the women have found. Um, and sometimes people are hesitant because that, you know, so in the back of their mind, they're like thinking that somebody's going to say, oh, who does she think she is? Yeah. You know, oh, who, you know. 
Because there's those little voices in there. Imposter that, syndrome, right? Imposter syndrome. I mean, that's, exactly. a, that's a big thing. And that, again, Huge. that's a that's something that is much, much harder for women to, to reconcile that, you know. Right. Because if you, for example, you're in business. Yes. Right? So, especially if you're an entrepreneur, a solo entrepreneur, you, you are your brand. Right. right. So you have to put yourself out. There. Right. You know, and, and I know it's uncomfortable for me because I don't like having my photo taken. Right. But, you know, the podcast, the marketing you business that we it. have, I mean, it really is. It's it's me. Yeah. So, you know, Nick's always saying we got to get some more pictures. We got to get a picture of this. And, and mm. oh, it's painful, <laughs> you know, and it's even more painful for for females because that's when you get that, you know, oh, look at her. There she is again. You know, get right. her picture taken, Who you know, oh, with the, you know, so. That that how do you how do you bring that around and, and get them comfortable with that aspect of things? Well, I mean, I think we have conversations about I mean, we have we have this same exact conversation, mm -hmm. right? That's number one. But then also. Um, I mean, that's really like we, it just mm -hmm. we just have a lot of conversations about it. like what is it that 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 you want? Um, I think also in I'm trying to think. Something else I was just gonna say, and it, like I have like these thoughts that go all around, and I'm like, oh, come back. <laughs> um, um, I think through the conversation, they have the aha moment. Okay. Right, and it right. gives them permission. Right. It gives them permission to be seen and a safe place. Right. It kind of goes back to that where they feel like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna be judged here. You know, I'm not, it's all, it's, it's a good, it's a safe place for me to just be. That's you know? a big deal. And yeah. yeah. And I always said, I mean, I just naturally tend to be the biggest goofball in the room. Like I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just, I don't. Yeah. And that's really cool. Right. You know, no, I mean, so, that's very cool. But that puts, I think that what I've discovered also is I think that allows them to also relax mm -hmm. so that they don't feel like they have to be performing for me right you know i do um, i get it I get and it. so because yeah. you know we're not all natural performers there are some right. humans that are that are just very comfortable in that spotlight but most of us just aren't comfortable and we're not we're not performers you know right my father was a school teacher and mm -hmm. a coach and I, he's a perfect example of that because you know he was very gregarious and outgoing, and he was always the life of the party. And, he, you know, he just took over every room he went into. Mm -hmm. And really what that was was a defense mechanism because he was honestly, in, in his real life, he was one of the, he was an introvert. He's one of the shyest people mm -hmm. I ever met in my life. That was so hard for him to walk into that room. Right. Okay, so he had to become that, right. you know, even right. when he was up in front of his classroom. You know, right. he had to become that teacher, that role, mm -hmm. that when he would rather have been in, back in the corner of the room just watching, you know. Right. And most, right. I think most people are like, that. yeah. You don't, they, we don't like the spot. Right. Well, and even me as a photographer, I mean, I really don't get a lot of portraits of myself. I mean, I did. I was, I was just going to ask you that. Do I you, know, do you right? Get your picture taken. Not a lot. I mean, I, I did just actually. I, um, I had to, you know, but I'm very choosy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Because, again, I don't, I wasn't just like, oh, I just want to go get my portrait taken. I wanted it to be, I wanted to feel comfortable with the person. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be an energetic alignment, right? And so um, I was just at a conference in September. And I, and there was, had been somebody that I had known for a while that I thought, oh, I, that would be great. I would love to be photographed by him. That would, you know. And um so it turned out that we were going to both be at this conference. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do it. You know, and it was great. I love, I mean. That's, that's cool. But I had the same, it's so funny because all the same things that my clients say to me were also going through my head. You know. That's interesting. Which, yeah. Because, but then I was having the conversation back and forth with myself. <laughs> yeah, my own head, yeah. With the things that I would say to them. And then, you know, but um, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? Oh my, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. And, um. What's it going to be like? I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot of money. I don't know. You know, just yeah. all that stuff. I can do it later. But you know what? We're not guaranteed later. Mm -hmm. We're not. Um, and that's a sad, I mean, it's, it's a sad but amazing thing. It is. You know? It is. It, it's, we, we, we're day to day. We're all day to right. day. We don't know. We, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. And, you know. God forbid. Yeah. Right. I mean, you could, you know, another thing I wanted to ask you. So I always say, 
If not now, when? What? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like, and, you know, <laughs> and cost always, you know, again, it's the world we live in. Cost yeah. comes into play. Yeah. And this is a very competitive yeah. business, mm -hmm. particularly just in, in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. You know, Everywhere in the world. I mean, it's, yeah, just, it's very it's, saturated. It, yeah. it, it absolutely is. How much do you feel that that cost, the price, plays into selection of a photographer? It, 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 I mean, yeah. where do you place it as far as with product and, mm -hmm. and cost. I mean, do you think people will, would go to somebody that may may not be quite as talented, but they're much more affordable? I'm sure people or do. I'm sure people do. You know? I mean, I charge a premium because I feel like it's worth what, you know, it's a well, premium you, experience, it's a premium product, it's right. premium. And that's, that's what you're right? supposed to do yes, in business. Exactly. But, um, and I, I feel like people pay, just like with everything, just like with coffee, mm -hmm. just like, you know, you go to a place like this versus making a cup at home because you want an experience or you want, you know, you pay. McDonald's drive through for a dollar you can get exactly caught. Exactly right. You know? So I think people, people spend money on what they value at a level that's, that's for what they value that thing. Very powerful. Yes. Right? Very so, and people, I've had people scrimp and save to come and get their portrait taken. And that to me is, I take, I don't take that lightly. I mean, I feel like right. I'm honored. Well, that's to make you, that, exactly. You know, because they, they want to be with you. They want you to, right. to capture that moment for them. Right. And if they're willing to do that, that, that has to make you feel good. And, and really, it does. Has to, you just, the, the, yeah, and the other thing that comes into, well, and this, I don't talk about this as much, but, um, I've had, you know, I've been in business for a long time, so I've, I've had several people and families come, like if they've had a really scary diagnosis, or even terminal, but even though it's just a really scary diagnosis, all of a sudden, you know, when anything bad happens in those darkest moments, that's the first thing people want to grab, right? Yeah. So I've had people come knowing that this is it's a more imminent possibility, if not for sure, yeah. and they will come and that's like sake that's like sacred to me oh it you know truly is. like i like i don't want to, i'm very emotional so i don't want to get like show up, but, that's okay but that that is really and, and that's that's an emotional thing i mean you know when you have somebody that is coming to you for that that have had that diagnosis this may be the last time exactly. that a family member is yes. with them yes you know that and that's what they that's what they're coming for that's a beautiful moment but it's yeah. also it is such that's so powerful. I mean, you know, that has to be hard for you to focus in a moment like mm -hmm. that and to, and to really, you know, I, you're a pro and, and no doubt about it, but I don't care who you are. That's yeah. got to get you. Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, I get, you know, I'm emotional. Yeah. Like, it's, I mean, I couldn't, I don't, it'd be hard to do this job if I wasn't. I mean, I think that's part of what I, yeah. I feel like that's what part of how I do what I do and why I do what I do is, is because of that part. Um, but it's um, it's very like I said. I'm just honored. Yeah. I I that's special to me. Oh yeah. You know, so I get it. Yep. Um, yep. You know it's funny too because my wife and I've been together for a long time. And if you come to our house, she loves pictures. We have pictures. We have twelve grandkids between uh, us, and you know <laughs> kids, grandkids. I mean, there's pictures everywhere. They're not a single picture of her and I. You'd never know we, we live there. Well, I know someone who can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I did. You, did, I, when, did I, when I was looking at your website, I, I, I submitted her for the 50 to for okay. over 50 thing because, you know, she's not one. Again, she's one of those people. She doesn't want spotlight on her. She doesn't right. want, you know, she wants to just be in the room, right. you know. And uh, But I think she deserves that. Yeah. You know, because it, it, just who she is and who she's been in her life and right. who she is to so many people. And, uh, but it's just, and yeah, she'll I always, cherish it now. Like she'll get a lot out of it now, but then it's also for everybody else. Well, it, you know, with too, it, Randall, you know, and right? she's, and mm. it will be so it's, it, it, it'll mean so much more to them. Yeah. Okay. And when I tell her that, that's the only way she'll do it. Yeah. You know, well, it's also setting an example. Yeah, like I've had other right. clients who have daughters and they're like, I'm, I'm setting an example of self value right. for my daughters, you yeah. know, and as long as they're in the right headspace. I love that. That's I feel true. like, you know, that is what comes through. Yeah. You know? Um, 
I agree because, you know, I, 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 from my perspective, I want my granddaughters to understand that, you know, being comfortable in your own skin mm -hmm. and loving who you are. Yes. That's what makes you beautiful. Right. When you're 50, 60, right. 70 years old. Right. It's got nothing to do with your exactly. hair color. It's got nothing to do with wrinkles or any of those right. things. It's that co that confidence of being comfortable in your own skin. Right. It's the only way I can really put it. Right. And I think you you give that opportunity to women in particular. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Because they, you know, you're you're. They all, every subject that I've seen you photograph, especially the ones that I know, the women that I know, they all seem so responsive and so comfortable in in front of your camp. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's that says, speaks volumes a lot. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know? And if, again, I'm just doing what I do naturally. So, and, and as I've, like I said, as I've kind of, I've learned a lot about yeah. kind of standing outside of myself and... Mm -hmm like trying to pick out like okay how how is this happening <laughs> you, know? you know and then, and so i think that's what it is is just yeah. that the connection that i have with them that i that's important to me and the focus on the experience so and you I'm, have... I'm calling them to their higher self right you know right. there you go i'm i'm helping them discard all of the noise that's out here yeah. you know and let's focus in on you and that's what's most important in terms of what are your values? What are your, um, what are the things that are really important to you? And and then giving them permission to ask for it. Sure, sure. And and I think that's that that is so cool. And, you know, but you're able to combine a, a a creative mindset, a creative. You you have that creative talent, that eye, that vision, but you also have a curiosity, which I think yes. you know. I'm very curious. You can be about every, a lot of things. You can be yeah. creative. You can have talent to paint, take photographs, whatever it will be. But if you're not curious, yeah. you know, and I'm fascinated by that because of this one here, because he's he's got that creative mm -hmm. piece, right? He's got that vision that most of the times I don't see it, you know. And he'll 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 want to get this shot, and I'm like, take the damn picture. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, you know what I mean? And it's like it. whether it's it, it's you know a, a sunrise or something like that. Yeah. We um, he, he was taking photos at a sewage treatment plant. Yeah. Now I'm talking about Nick for a second, but he got this perfect. He waited. He was there at sunrise. Got this perfect photo that could be a National Geographic of the sun coming up over a, a sewage a treatment plant, yeah, yeah. right? Which is not like okay, it's it, we don't we don't need that. We just needed a picture of the plant, right? But. Because he has that curiosity and that creativity, it made it so much more than what we actually needed, For right? Sure. So it's it's basically, you know, under promise over deliver. We we told the client we would get a, a, this photo, but he took it above and beyond and got a photo that every everybody that's seen is going, wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, it looks like a vacation photo, and it's it's a right. It's a sewage <laughs> right. plant. You know. Yeah. So those those that that. It, and that's one of the reasons why I was so excited to talk to you because that is that creativity is in curiosity is so that combination together is just so beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's something that just came to mind. I remember I used to have. Well, first of all, I used to want to, when I was in high school I wanted to be a National Geographic photographer. So it's funny that you mentioned. That. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I also when I you know as my kids have gotten older, like I started out doing a lot of babies and young children and okay. did that for many years and you know still families of course but as my children got older I started you know I was more doing yeah. older yeah, um, sure. which is all fine and now that I'm over 50 I'm kind of focused here and, yeah. and but um but what I was going to say was is that there were times I remember when you know you're doing newborns you know and I would be like oh let's let's put them in this thing whatever it is you know and and let's go out into this spot over here. And they're like, there's garbage everywhere. I said, no, 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 you won't even see it. It's going to be amazing. And of course, and they're just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But okay. it was amazing. The yeah. end result yeah. was beautiful, sure. you know, and it was just because of the way the light was coming through and like that, you know, it was just, and, and um, so it was just funny that you brought up that story. because No, that's, that. That, that, that's really very cool. So you mentioned you have, you have two children. Yes. And a girl and a boy. Yes. And your daughter lives in Italy. Yes. Tell me about that. How's that? How's that for a mom having your uh, having your baby uh, all the way across I the know, ocean? Right. Well, I had lived 
it kind of goes, I had lived overseas in my 20s, um, when we, before email and, you know. You're really there isolated. There was no, yeah. yeah, so like I, you know, we, my parent, fam, I was gone for two years. I was in Poland. I was in the Peace Corps. And Peace Corps is like, you know, that is, you very rarely hear about the Peace Corps. I know. You know, and. Well, and well, yeah, I'm not sure why. That was, a, that was such a cool thing. Yeah. And, it, and, you know, it was one of those things that I think, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. So bit in the 70s. I think we all thought about that. That yeah, is yeah. so cool. We, we romanticized it, you know, yeah. but nobody would get that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to work. You know? right, but right. but I, I applaud you. Tell me about that. So you were in Poland for two years. I was in Poland for two what years. What were you doing? I was teaching English, okay. high school English, and then I also did some community development projects. Um, I did like a, got a grant from USAID for a computer lab to, because this was in the, you know, 95 to 97. So this was just okay. a few years after the wall fell. And my town was in the southeast of Poland. So it wasn't near the west. It was very much, you know, it was a very small town. And there was a lot of upheaval happening at that time. Okay. And so, I mean, you know, shifting from sure. the system it was before to that. So there was a lot of opportunities and a lot of people were going to the cities for the opportunities. I, you know, I guess happens here as well, but for there, it was like really a dramatic okay. shift. Right. And so, um, so what I, I was focused on building that capacity to give them opportunities. So like they needed, they didn't, you know, they needed just basic computer skills in terms of, cause they didn't really have that before, right. you know, in terms of, okay, you need to learn Excel and, yes. uh, and yes. it, it also at the time, I mean, if you remember, this was in the mid nineties, that was still everybody needed to learn those skills. Well, it wasn't like, yeah, it was you know, it's not like they were sure. backwards or whatever, you know. Sure. Um, and so I got a grant for computer lab at the school, but it, then they also did community classes. Okay. And then I also did a women's breast cancer. I, w I worked with a radiologist and we had Polish like materials about um, self exams yeah. and things. And yeah. so we went around training nurses and okay. stuff like that with that. Um, okay. So I did that, but then I also taught, I just, you know, taught the high school English and it's fun. I'm still in contact with some of my students, is which right? is wonderful. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, you speak Polish? I do. Yeah. I mean, I didn't when I went, <laughs> but, and I lost, you know, I've, I'm not, I don't speak it as well as I did before. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult language. So oh, bet, the grammar yeah. is really difficult. Um, so it's, but I get by. Like I got to the point where I could argue in Polish, so I guess nice. it's pretty well, bad or pretty good, right? <laughs> yes. Um, that is pretty good. And, um, and so you're, I, a, yeah. you're a native Californian. I am. Oh, so we, we're we, okay. Go ahead. Well, I was just say at some point we'll come back to the kids because like. <laughs> yeah. No, we will. <laughs> and and, and if, here's where I'm going to go with that. So, you know, California and Pennsylvania, in particular Pittsburgh, have a connection, but usually it's the other way. It's everybody, people from going to Pittsburgh, going to California. Right. You but came back the other back. way. But the thing that's, I, I lived a lot of places, but the thing about Pittsburgh that's amazing, which kind of ties into this other project I'm starting, we'll, maybe we'll talk about it, I don't know, but um, people come back. Mm -hmm. I've I never guess. seen that. That is a very unique thing yeah. about Pittsburgh, that people leave, but then they invariably come back. Yeah. It, it, at least that's the plan. That's usually the plan. Yeah. You know. Like yeah. that's. That's I, that's a special thing that Pittsburgh has, you know. Yeah, so, so. Um, but yeah. So anyway, I came to your. I guess the next question is, why am I in Pittsburgh? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so after I had I after uh, Poland at the Peace Corps, I had Peace Corps fellowships at Duquesne and CMU for grad school. Okay. So um, yeah. So I came here for that. Yeah, but it was funny because I said, I was like, I don't want to meet anybody. I just want to get this done and go back home because I'd already been gone for two years sure. from, you know, sure. from my family and all that. And, um, and of course, I met my husband and he's from here and uh, he was OK with moving back to California, but then it just wasn't working. And then the crash in you know, 2008 and yeah. it just yeah. the timing wasn't good. And then by the time things got better with that, then the kids didn't want to move. So, you know, it just sort of works out how it does. But, um, uh, and it just is a fluke, a crazy coincidence that I have family here. I have a cousins, like really? extended cousins. My grandmother was one of 11 and she was from like Eastern Ohio. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of cousins in like Columbus to Pittsburgh, oh, okay. like, okay, you know, sure. this, 
Um, so, and her oh, youngest cool. brother that I mentioned before, yeah, uh, he lives just over in um, Heidelberg. That's well, not cool. Heidelberg. He, well, basically, it's like Carnegie. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I don't know what the, where he used to be chief of police there in Carnegie. Okay. So, cool. Cool. or Collier, so, Collier Township. Collier Township. Yeah. Okay. So, you have your daughter is in Italy, and what is she doing yes. there? Teaching English. <laughs> <laughs> She's following in your footsteps. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that that, I mean, you know, we'll see what she ends up doing, but mm -hmm. that's what she's doing right now. Okay. She just graduated Temple. She did study abroad for a year in okay. Rome. Oh, okay. When she was in college, and then she just graduated this summer, and so she has this there thing there until the end of May, but she wants to live there. And oh, good for her. So for she's going to, you know. Hey, I, I think when, when you're young you know, like that, that's, that's, that's what I the said. time to explore and do those I things. I said, go live your dream, baby. Like, yeah. you know, and of course, you know, I want to, I want to be there even before she wanted to do this. Like, I want to be there like four to eight weeks a year, you know, like just the pace of life is different, mm -hmm. you know, um, and just plus, of course, all the history and the art. Oh, and it's it, all of it's that. amazing. And it's the I mean, it's the it, honestly, it's the everything's there. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. When you think about, especially in art, in in that space, I yeah. mean, that's that's the center of the universe. It's and 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 I'm. <laughs> it's just funny. I so I when I'm looking at something like that, I'm looking at not just the totality of the whatever it is, whether it's architecture or painting or whatever, or sculpture, mm -hmm. mosaics, you know, but I'm looking also at like the small little details of it. And I'm thinking about the person who was making that, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm wanting to know their story, who were they and how, you know. Um, so I was just laughing because when we went to go visit her while she was in Rome and we traveled, you know, we were there for a couple of weeks. We went a couple of places, but um, it was funny because I was going around taking pictures of things. Of course, you know, the things you would normally do, sure, sure. but I was zooming in also on like details of things. And she's, so she was laughing at me. She's like, yeah, there I am. You know, we're in this amazing place and there's my mom over in the corner taking a picture of this. It was so <laughs> um, so yeah, so she razzes me about that, but um yeah, like I just, I just love the craftsmanship. Oh my gosh, craftsmanship oh, and yeah. attention. I mean, that's what, you know, a lot of my products are from Italy, you know, because it allows me to do that. Yeah. You know, I don't do anything generic. Well, you know, the Roman Empire, you, 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 you would not believe, you know, I spent my career in the engineering and construction industry. You would not believe how often that comes up. Yeah. There are big chunks of the sewer system in Paris, for example. Yeah. It was built by the Romans. It's still being used today. I bet. You know, bridges and, 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 and road paving stones and things like that, that are thousand years old. Yeah. They're still in use and, and buildings in Rome, mm -hmm. you know, we consider a 200 year old building old. Oh my right. God, that's old. Right. Here's, a, here's a, right. a thousand year old church that people were still going to, to mass in every, every, every Sunday. Oh yeah. So it's, it's a, it's an amazing place. Have you ever been to Istanbul? No, I, okay. I have not. I have never been to Europe. Oh my gosh. And I, James. I, I want to, I will get there. <laughs> I will get there. It's all those kids. Well, it's, that's true. But, but yeah. no, we will get there, and we have plans to do that. And again, it's like, you know, I tell I tell Terry Lynn all the time, you know, I probably going to do it like sooner, sooner rather than later, yeah, because yeah. you know, it, but it's just one of those things where, yeah. you know, you, you'll get to it when you get to it. But, yeah. Um, so Istanbul, because um, back, you know, I have not been there since the '90s, but we okay. went a couple times. But um, in Istanbul is the Hagia Sophia. It's, Huge! It was a, it was the largest church in the world for a thousand years until St. Peter's was built in Rome. So you, St. Peter's is already old. That was, yeah. you know, and yeah. so that's several hundred years old. And then you're talking about the Hagia Sophia for a thousand years. So I think yeah. it was built in like 432 or something like that. Yeah. Some 400s. And um, so when you're there and you're walk, you know, the big stone like thresholds and this and you're walking and it's like it's all worn down from all the people walking like i don't know yeah. it's just something it's magical it's you amazing. know it is um, absolutely amazing so tell me before we oh have gosh. to wrap up yeah, yeah. tell me about your these you mentioned a, a, a project coming. another project well i'm still doing the 50 or 50. you're gonna do so, that again 
Yes. So okay. we're it's and the big reason is because there's like a community forming around it. So um, we kind That's of formalized wonderful. it and call it like the Legacy Coterie, which is so we have like happy hours and um, you know do some different sort of little activities, you know, together because the connection part of it, I yeah. I discovered. I didn't realize it when I first started the project. I thought it would be cool for them all to meet, but then, like, the, it became a real need say, and yeah. something that they really valued was connecting with other women who also had stepped into that self-value energy, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And okay. so, anyway, so I'm still doing that. So we okay. already have, I think, 10 spots booked okay. of the next 50. Okay. So we'll do another one of these shows in the fall. Um, so I'm yeah, really excited about that. No, that's, um, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, and then, of course, I'm doing more, leaning more into those bigger legacy projects that we had talked about before, where we're, yes, we're going to do this session now. Maybe we'll also curate the, the really important photos, you know. Yeah, sure. And then, you know, maybe include some video That'd interviews cool. and things yeah, like, that like that to really create yeah. something that's going to last and be beautiful. So that, those, those kinds of projects, working more deeply and broadly. Okay. And, and I want people to think of me as their legacy curator, right? So nice. it's bringing them yeah. museum stuff. But the other project that I'm starting to sort of like, you know, putting feelers out and all of that is um, the working is like a coffee table book. Okay. And it's okay. focused on Pittsburgh roots. So it's people, it can be individuals or it can also be families that maybe have multi-generational businesses here or have built something or have had who have really been ingrained in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. in some way okay. right um, and also include their stories and um, oh, kind of showcase cool. them and, and I just because I'm so inspired by Pittsburgh's like that sense of place and pride of place that well, it's, it's a very generational place it is you know when yeah. you look at, at, at California as a a great example. It's, yeah. it's very transitional. There, mm -hmm. are, there are very few native Californians. Right. 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 Everybody is from somewhere. Right. But Pittsburgh is a really a multi generational community. Right. And that that pull that it has mm -hmm. to bring people back, I yeah. feel like, yeah. is is very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And then of course I just always love the stories of people yeah. and their families and their heritage, you know, That's really cool. um, and all of that. So, so I think that'll be fun. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it will project be fun. as well. It'll be interesting. Um, very cool. So. Cool. So we, we okay, so in, in closing, we uh, we 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 have five <laughs> pillars that we talk about um, on the podcast and my blog and everything. It's live, love, learn, pray, and inspire. Mm -hmm. Okay, and my father always told me those, those were the five pillars of a good life, right? Mm -hmm. He said if you do those five things every day, yeah. you're gonna have a pretty good day. In fact, it's almost impossible not to have a good right. day. Right. That's a good mantra. So of those five things, what what resonates with you and why? What did you say? say? Live, love, learn, work, pray, pray and inspire. And inspire. Mm. Yeah. I'm a big learner. I'm I'm always going down rabbit holes, and and that's my ADHD, like you know, or my ADD. I guess they're calling it different things now. But um, I am just in that curiosity. You know, I'm always learning I, I mean you know whatever I, I it is it a, could be even if I'm watching like a show or like a historical show I'm like oh mm -hmm. okay what you know yeah who are these people real what what was the I background? do that all the and time I'm, if I'm, watching, right. so I'm googling like, you know what yeah right oh, yeah um, yeah uh I'm just I'm very curious about a lot of things mm -hmm. and so I feel like that gives me a lot of that energizes me yeah you know um so i I feel like that's a big one. If it's not the biggest one, I feel like it is a big one because it's kind of hard. Those all, those are all important, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, loving. I mean, that's all. That's su I mean, yeah. that loving connection and oh, yeah. and all of that. Um, but I feel like sometimes, you know, when you get into the zone, sometimes you know you're busy just like everybody else, and so sometimes you have to remember to to. Yeah. You know, and, and there's just like little things that you build into your day right. in terms of right. of making sure those touch points happen, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, that's a, I mean, it's really like my husband, my husband, I love my husband. He's so wonderful. But he um, every day at three o'clock, XOXO, he texts me, you know, like nice. just little things like that. Yeah. Right? Nice, like, nice. That's, like, that's cool. I mean, for him. 
it's it's just a. How long have you been married? Since uh, so twenty three years. Twenty yeah, because it's, we awesome. got married in two thousand, so that'll make it easy. <laughs> there you go. That's not that's easy. Nice round number. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I, I it's been such a great conversation. Yes, thank you for coming you. and joining us and talking with us. And I hope I we'll be it. able to collaborate on some stuff moving forward. I love yeah. what you do and how you do it. And thank you. you know these um, these guys do where I don't really work very much. I'm I'm kind of just hanging around. But these guys work. They're working. So yeah, but yeah. Let's let's absolutely see if we can find some ways to work together. Yeah, because it definitely would. Uh, That'd be good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.